my brother, the Reverend Dr. Frank Edward Ray, and I, with our, our president, Dr. Shields, give him a hand for me. <laughs> Dr. Glover is not here, is he? And uh, our chairman, am I the only one tonight? All right, come on, devotional committee, give them a hand, they come. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear the love and be glad. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. Well, the line is never busy. Tell him what you want. Oh, the line is never busy.
familiar passage. St. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten, begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Am I right about it? Call him up. All over this building, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, our God, thank you for one more day. Thank you for allowing us to assemble in this place one more time. You've been mighty good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And I pause to say thank you for this citywide revival. Thank you for this anointed ground. Thank you for this anointed servant. Thank you for our president and our vice president and our chairpersons. Thank you for our citywide choir. Thank you for everyone that's come, Lord. Thank you for our musicians. Thank you now, Lord. You've been mighty good to us. Bread of heaven, feed us now till we want no more. Bless every one of your servants that's going to stand here and have stood here in the name of Jesus. I just want to thank you, God. I just want to thank you, God. I just want to thank you, God. Open our hearts, God. Open our minds, God, to receive your word, God. In the name of Jesus, bless this revival. Bless it physically. Bless it spiritually. Bless it financially. God, I thank you, God. Thank you, God. You're already here right now. We love you, God. We know you got all power. We know you said high and you look low. And want to tell you thank you, God, for all what you're going to do in this house tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise you enough. Somebody needs you today. Somebody needs you right now. Bless in a mighty way. In the name of Jesus, this is your servant's prayer. Amen. And amen. Thank you, brothers. What a very unique way. You learn something new every day, don't you? Come on, give the choir a hand as they come. Uh, can y'all do better than that for the Lord? Can y'all do better than that for the Lord? Come on. Not enough, not enough, not enough. This ain't for me. It ain't for the, it ain't for the choir. This is for God. Amen. I'm grateful for this opportunity to share as the chairman for the music department of this, this year. Last night we had an incident that happened. We had a young man sitting right over here on the front row. His name is uh, Raymond Shears. Raymond, can you stand? Kept him up here. <laughs> Raymond has a serious case of neuropathy, but he wants to be here. I just want to share a, bit about a word about dedication. And he really should be at home, but his wife didn't want him at home, so he decided to come out. Raymond and I have been friends for a great number of years. And so tonight, 
I, I, I want Raymond to know that we are concerned about him and we love that dedication. <laughs> love that dedication. <laughs> We've already prayed for him, but you can continue to pray for him throughout the service. The choir is coming. You may be seated right now. The choir is coming with Psalms 100 and then enter into his gate. Psalms 100, most of us learned that. Uh, teacher said by heart, mama said by heart, when we were in elementary school, if you're over 50 years old, you learned it in elementary school, we're gonna sing Psalms 100, and followed by enter into his gates with thanksgiving, amen. Now I'm going down here and sit beside Raymond where the crippled people belong. Oh. 
to act. Is it time now? Give this crowd a big hand. Amen. Come to praise his name. Glad to see our preacher for tonight, Dr. Orr. Give him a big round. Amen. Reverend Larry Love is coming now for a greeting. Give him a hand as he comes. We come to bless his name. That's all. Amen. We, we give honor to my illustrious pastor, Dr. Ray. Amen. To our president, Dr. Shield, our vice president, Dr. Glover, our chairpersons of this citywide simultaneous revival, Dr. William, Dr. Vernon Horner, Dr. Stanback, and to all of our leaders that grace us and cause in everything that you seek to come about. We thank God for them, and then especially to you, you, and you that are here on today. And I shan't not ever leave out the love of my life, Lady Love. Amen. I thank you all tonight for coming. This is the spot for the greetings in the country church, they call it the welcome. Amen, where I'm from. I'm reminded of one of our former presidents, Pastor Dr. J.C. Smith, I mean J.C. Backers. If J.C. Backers was here tonight, he'd say, y'all know what? I'm peacock proud and hyena happy to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. Amen. You ought to be glad to be here. Amen, amen. I don't know about you, but I am, and we're having a glorious time worshiping and praising the Lord. Amen. And you are extremely welcome in the house of the Lord to be here to worship and praise the Lord in your own way. Amen. But there's one thing left, I believe, that uh, is left to be done and to do, and that is to obey God according to Revelation 3 and 20. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open that door, I will come in with him and sup with him and him with me. Tonight, as we greet you and as we welcome you, Jesus is standing at the door of each one of our hearts. And all he wants us to do, church, tonight, tonight, before we leave here, during the the worshiping experience, all he wants us to do is open up that door. Will you open up that door? Open up the door of your mind. Open up the door of your soul. God wants us to open up that door so he can send in the floodgates of heaven. Somebody here need a blessing. You need a blessing tonight? Well, if you need a bless blessing tonight, you are Welcome. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Love. Give him another hand, if you will. The choir is coming back now, singing songs of Zion, and after the 
choir shall have finished, the pastor of this church will be next online, Dr. Frank Ray. Give him a hand in advance. Your grace is sufficient. Your love is tremendous. We worship, worship, worship your name, your grace. See you. 
And the people of God said amen. Say amen again. And one more time. I've been given an assignment and I want to fulfill my assignment. I discovered that Whatever happened in the body of Christ, it is always pinned in the scripture. There's a passage in the Bible, Luke 6, 38, contain 40 words. Anytime you see the number 40, it stands for trials and probation. Moses spent 40 years living with Pharaoh. He spent 40 years on the backside of the desert with his father-in-law, Jethro. He spent 40 years leading Israel out of Egypt which meant he spent 40 years thinking he was somebody. 40 years discovering he was nobody. And 40 years learning how God could take a nobody and make a somebody. 40. 
stand for trials and probation. Second Chronicles 714 contained 40 words. He said, if you fulfill these 40, he said, I'll make them work in your behalf. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive them of their sins, and heal their land. Jesus says to us in Luke 638, of the 40 words, if you fulfill the very first word, he said, I will make the other 39 work in your behalf. He says, give. And the word give in the Greek is didomai. Is in the imperative mood which means it is a command. It's in plural form, which means not just me, but you as well. It's in present tense, that means continuing in action. It's in the active verb, that means the subject is performing the action. He's a give. And then watch what it says, it started working for you, and it shall be. <laughs> given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure, your measure, it shall be given, help me say, unto you. Shout is given time. Hallelujah. For the Lamb. Normally, always, in our citywide revival, we try on the first night uh, to raise enough money to help hound pretty much what's going to happen all the week. We're trying to do it the first night, and that was last night, but we missed it. <laughs> Heaven said we missed it. And so when we miss it one night, we have to make up for it the next night. So uh, I need us to do something special tonight um, so we can make sure we can just have church the rest of the week. Amen? Amen. I know that there are people, uh, two or three, I spotted y'all that say he going to start asking for a certain amount for certain people. I didn't make this up. <laughs> I, I really didn't. I didn't make it up. You remember when Jesus was born and when he came uh, and when the wise men came, they brought different size of gifts. <laughs> Everybody didn't bring the same thing. Everybody wasn't eight, but one brought gold, one brought frankincense, and the other brought myrrh. They brought different gifts. We want to bring tonight different gifts. Let me tell you what I need. I need about 50 persons. It don't have to be a preacher, so I need about 50 people that would be willing to share a hundred dollars. I need 50 people, 50 people, 50, just 50, 50 people that's willing to share a hundred dollars. I need you to get right up, and so I won't have to call your name. Just when you get up and come up here, everybody know it's a hundred dollars. Come on, I need 50 people. Come on, I need 50 people. Stand, uh, st just stand and hold, take your man. I need 50 people, come on. It ain't hard for them to see you. <laughs> 50 people. Come on, come on. I need 50 people, come on, come on, come on, 50. I need 50 people. That's wonderful, 50 people, 50. 50 people, 50, come on, come on. That's Brother Thorne. <laughs> Thank you.
thank you so much, Doc. He feed me every time I go to the cover. He can make sure that I eat sufficiently. Thank you, Doc. Come on, come on, y'all. Come on, come on. You did know that you're more like the Lord when you give than you are any other time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much. Thank you. That was about 30. I need about 20 more. 20 more willing to share $100. 20 more, 20 more, 20 more. 20 more, 20 more. 20 more. That's right. You can, you can. What's our cash app? Dollar sign Memphis BMA. Dollar sign. Dollar sign Memphis BMA. All right. Thank you. I need everybody that's willing to share at least. Man, 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 let's do it this way. Every man, uh, bring $20. Every man in the house. Every man. Every man. Every man. Every man. Bring $20. Every man. Every man. Every man. Come on, brothers. Come on. It's such a joy to see, see men in church. It's such a joy. Come on, let's thank God for all of these. All these men, all these men. Wonderful brothers. Thank you all so much. So wonderful, so wonderful. Thank you all so much. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Now, the prettiest the prettiest people on planet earth is a black woman. If God made anybody any prettier than a black woman, he kept them to himself. I want the ladies to come bring $20. Every lady, come on, every lady, come on, come on ladies, come on. Come on, from all over the house. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, ladies. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Wonderful. 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 Thank you all so much. Amen. We have a preacher in the house. He used to come here and preach for us at Salem when he was a little bit little fella. Couldn't even see over the pulpit. But he preached there. He had been faithful. Amen. And committed. Everybody, if I miss somebody, come on. If I miss somebody. Lynn, so glad to see you. She's representing her husband. Thank you so much. Dr. Ed Parker. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wonderful. so much. Our ushers are coming. These are some bad musicians, ain't they? I kind of heard a little of it sound like some of them been playing somewhere else. I don't know. It just kind of Kind of sound like it. The choir giving, the choir.
requires giving. Isn't that wonderful? I think. It's good to have a good laugh, is it not? <laughs> Laughing is a spiritual jogging. You got 46 muscles in your face. Take all 46 to frown. Take only 16 to smile. Every now and then, find you something to laugh about. <laughs> and if, if you can't think of nothing to laugh about, just go stand in the mirror. <laughs> Let's pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for the gift and give us. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Back in the hands of our chair. Ain't nobody do it like Frank Ray, can they? Give him a hand. <laughs> Brown Baptist, would you all come up at this time? Amen. Brown Baptist Choir. Would y'all come up and take the stand? Got a great preacher tonight. We've really been enjoying this revival. Kicked off last night with the pastor, Dr. Ray. And then today at the building, Dr. DeMarcus Smith preached until he had preachers crying. Amen. And I was one of them. Citywide choir, great big hand. In the They've been doing a great job. If I could sing, I'd be singing with them. Working my mouth so you think I'm singing. Amen. Are you all enjoying this revival? Vice President has come in, Dr. Glover, Dr. Horner, our chairperson. Look like a finance committee. Amen. Bless you. The last fella is my cousin. <laughs> He's a tall man. this man of God he is no stranger in this city nor in this country before I knew him I knew his father 
we worked together at a place called Hunter Fan out on Frisco. Father was a kind man. Brother Willie Hoy, I just like to call his name. Amen. Then I met his son sitting in the pulpit at the New Hope Baptist Church, pastor by Dr. Sherman Helton, my good friend. And you know, Dr. Ray, I'm getting older now. I had a birthday last week, I think, or week before last, one of the two. And when I met Bartholomew, oh, he was a young man. And uh, just keep living, Reverend. Dr. O is going to come after this choir. Would you say preach, preach preacher? Give them a big hand. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's do it. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, the song says, when I think of his goodness and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. What? Come on, my soul cries out what? Come on, let's just lift our hands in the room and just give him praise. Hallelujah. He's been a good God to us. Come on, just open your mouth and just fill the house with worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing it. Thank you, sir. For always being there. For always being there. Your love has set me free. When I think of your goodness, I give you praise. Anybody say that?
God do it. Come on, give him praise in the room. Come on, even when after music, open your mouth and give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy of your praise. Open your mouth and give it to him. Hallelujah. I know we say we a Baptist church, but we give him praise however we got to give it to him. Open your mouth and just tell him how good he is to you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. things from my life make me better Lord better and if it means that I I have a lot to sacrifice make me better Lord better even if it means that I I have a life with you say
together from across this Memphis, Mid-South area, various churches, God, with one purpose, one desire, to ask that you will send a revival in Memphis, God. We need it like never before. We pray that you will send a revival. Lord, let it begin within each one of us. We thank you for this night. Thank you for worship. Thank you for the opportunity to gather together as your disciples. And now, Lord, we need a word from you. Speak to us and speak through us that your word may go forth, that our coming will not be in vain. Use us even now. Strengthen us, God us power from on high, and we'll be careful to give thy name the praise, the victory is already yours. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that somebody watching, somebody present, Lord, that if they don't know you as Lord and Savior, that even tonight they will give their heart to you, that if someone has strayed away, God, that even tonight you will restore the backslidden, and God, that you will welcome back home every saint. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let every heart say thank you, Jesus. We give praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to our host pastor, our friend and brother, Dr. Frank Ray, and truly we are so thankful for him, amen. I was telling my grandson, it was probably 40 years ago, amen, that he would have me come in here and preaching, and so grateful, so indebted, amen, for just the open doors down through the years, and then to uh, this Memphis Baptist Ministerial Association, to President Dr. Chills, to Vice President Glover to our revival chairperson, amen, Pastor Luther Williams and Pastor Charles Stenbeck and Pastor Vernon Bornham, to all of these pastors and ministers and to uh, these mothers and officers and ushers, to each of you, it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And we're thankful, amen, for this Monday night, amen. Uh, I know some folks say it's April Fool's Day, amen. We ain't fooling around up in here, amen. We, we've been having some church, amen, amen. And we are so thankful. Thank you again just for the opportunity. And uh, to those that are watching online, look, hit that like button here, hit that share button, invite some others to be a part. Matter of fact, uh, Brown, amen, you got the text message uh, on, this after, on this evening. Look, send that out there, text it out to some others. And um, those that are present, um, I'm going to be preaching from Luke chapter 15. If you would like these notes and you can follow right along with us, you can text OR, O-R-R, -R, to 27636. And uh, text OR to 27636. And you can follow the link uh, that will take you to where the sermon notes are. And you can follow right along and then be able to go back and to share them. 
we're grateful. Thank you again for just this opportunity. There's a word, Luke chapter 15, and I want to read verses 11 through 32. Luke chapter 15 and verses 11 through 32. And again, we are so thankful and humbled, amen, uh, to have us to come. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, Luke chapter 15, beginning with verse 11. These words are recorded therein as you stand for the reading of the word of God. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet, and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life he was lost but now he is found so the party began meanwhile the older son was in the fields working when he returned home he heard music and dancing in the house and he asked one of the servant what was going on your brother is back he was told and your father has killed the fattened calf we are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him, but he replied, all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. And all that time you never gave me any, uh, never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours come back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. His father said to him, look, dear son, you have always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. I want to preach about tonight, don't miss the party. Don't miss the party. Talk about a party, brothers and sisters. It was a celebration like none other. I'm talking about the music was going. I'm talking about the hats was being worn. They were throwing the banners. They were doing their dancing. And they were singing. It was a party like none other. But one missed the party. One person missed 
the party. Matter of fact, brothers and sisters, after even being begged, he still refused to come to the party. Matter of fact, uh, we read it there, Luke chapter 15, verse 28. His dad, and the Bible said, the older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him to come in, even after a pri personal, private, passionate invite, this man still missed the party. Can I ask you something tonight? Will you be the one to miss the party? I mean, will you be the one to, to miss out on the joys that are happening? I, I like this crowd. Y'all got into it. Y'all stood up, and yet there was probably one or two. Hmm. It doesn't take all of that. It's already after 8 o'clock. And yet, brothers and sisters, he missed the party. You see, I'm convinced, y'all, that you can be too far away and miss the party, and you can also be too close up and miss the party. You can be too far away because you can be like that younger boy was who had strayed away into a distant land, and he was running with the wrong people. He was doing the wrong practices. He ended up in the wrong place, and y'all, if he hadn't come to himself, he would have missed the party. And yet, you can be too close and miss the party. Like that older boy, he was too close, y'all. He never strayed away. He never left home. I mean, he stayed close to his daddy. He was in Sunday school every Sunday. Matter of fact, he taught the class, y'all. He sat down front doing worship service. And yet, when the party went on, he missed the party. And he missed the party because he had the wrong attitude, always comparing himself to the next person, thinking that he was better than his younger brother. He missed the party because he had the wrong affection. He was not truly loving daddy. He said, I've just been slaving for you all of these years. He missed the party because he had the wrong anger on the inside. And that's what I want to sh share with y'all tonight, that since the Lord's party is always a two-for-one, invite everyone to the party. Let me say that again. Let me hang my hat there. Since the Lord's party is always a two-for-one, invite everyone to the party. You see, they didn't get it, y'all. They, they didn't get it. They, they just didn't understand that. Brother and sister Goody Two Shoes, who thought they were good as gold, and they had discovered that some good for nothing sinners kept showing up every time Jesus went to teach him and preach him. Somebody had to tell Jesus that these kinds of folks weren't good enough, and so they did just that. Luke chapter 15, verse 1 and 2, tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. Then this made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. They didn't get it, y'all. How in the world could Jesus call himself a savior and run with that kind of crowd. Oh, I wonder tonight, y'all, have we forgotten what church is all about? Have we forgotten what it is that God have called us to do? It, it, brothers and sisters, do you not know that we are in the party throwing business? Let me say it over here. Let me say it over here. Y'all look like y'all the wild party crowd. Uh, don't you know that we are in the party throwing business? Matter of fact, matter of fact, every week, y'all, we ought to be inviting everyone to come to the party. 
I wonder when was the last time you invited somebody on your job? When was the last time you invited somebody from the neighborhood? When was the last time you invited somebody from your home? When was the last time you invited somebody on social media? Hey, come to a party with me. We got to invite everyone to the party. And so three things I see and I'll let you go. First of all, what I call the passion for our purpose. The passion for our purpose, y'all. I call this our business plan. Our business plan, the passion for our purpose. Because Luke chapter 15, verse 11, look what Jesus' Bible is going to say. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. Now, what point is Jesus trying to emphasize? Luke chapter 19, verse 10, he's trying to emphasize what his purpose was then and what our purpose is still today. Luke 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Look. When they began to complain about the kind of folks that were in the crowd, Jesus is going to tell them not one parable, but three parables about things that were lost. A lost sheep, a lost corn, a lost son. Why? Because he wanted them to know, I'm just passionate about the purpose that I've been called for. I wonder tonight, y'all, have we lost our passion for our purpose? Do we get more excited about the songs we sing than the souls that are saved? Do we get more excited about our Easter speeches we give on a Sunday morning than we do about the evangelistic conversation we ought to be having every week? Are we more passionate about the annual picnic than we are about the daily sharing of Jesus Christ? Oh, brothers and sisters, we got to get back to the passion for our purpose. What do these parables teach us tonight? Keep searching until we find them. That's what the parables teach us. Keep searching until we find them. We must go out of here into the world, leave the nine and nine, and go after the one until we find them. We got to keep searching until we find them. I don't know about y'all, but I know it's happening. We're losing folks in church. And we can't blame it on the pandemic, y'all. That, that been three, four years ago and we're still losing folk in the church. We got to keep searching until we find them. But not only keep searching until they, we find them, that one man left the, na the nine and nine sheep, went after the one, but we got to keep shining until we spot them. Because sometimes we got to realize that they are lost right in the house. Sometimes they're lost right within the church house. That woman that lost her corn, she lost her corn not out in the world. She lost her corn in the house. And so the Bible said she flipped the script, the, the switch, and turned on the light and went to searching in the house. Oh, every one of our churches, we ought to start going up and down every really line on our roads to make sure that everybody who called themselves a member is a born again child of God because one day we're going to have to stand before judgment seat and I don't want the Lord to say depart from me I never knew you we got to keep shining until we spot them but then we got to keep praying until they come back home aren't you glad that daddy kept on praying he had been praying for his son, y'all. And how do I know that? Because when the boy was still afar off, daddy, looking for his son, ran to his son. He kept on praying. He kept on looking. He kept on loving his son, even when he was in a far 
country. The passion for our purpose simply says Memphis Baptist Ministerial, we got to get back to business. We got to get back to business, y'all. We got to get back to soul searching business. We got to get back to soul saving business. We got to get back to the business that the Lord called us when he said, go ye therefore into all the world and preach and teach what I have commanded you and lo I'm with you always even unto the ends of the earth. We got to get back to the business of rightly dividing the word of truth so that sinners can come to Christ. We got to get back to the business of going to the street corner of setting up the tents out side of going back to our job and let this dying world know that Jesus is the only way the truth and the life we got to get back to business Jesus did say if I be lifted up I'll draw all men unto me the passion for our purpose get back to business but not only the passion for our purpose get back to business the people to pursue I call this our business clients, y'all, the, the people to pursue. Because look what verse 24, for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Who are we going after? Who are we trying to win? Who are you telling about Jesus Christ. Who are you inviting to your church? Ain't it something? We'll invite folks to the club. We'll invite folks to happy hour. We'll invite folks to watch the game. And yet, when was the last time we invited folks to church? Who are we trying to win? Well, sadly, some churches are like these Pharisees, y'all, and, and they think that only certain kind of folks are good enough to target for our churches. Matter of ma ma fact, sometimes they even have the kind of person that they are looking for, but oh, I'm so glad Jesus didn't have just a specific type. Can I tell you who Jesus went after? Everybody, everybody, Jesus went after everybody. Did you see what this, the Bible described this boy? This boy was dead. He was lost, and yet dad embraced him, loved him, and even welcomed him back home. And so who are, who are we to go after the people we ought to be going after? I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you, we ought to be going after the broke, busted, and disgusted. I call these those that have nothing. We ought to be going after the broke, busted, and disgusted, those with nothing. The prodigal son is a perfect example. Look, these are the desperate folks. They are just ready for somebody to talk to them. They are ready for somebody to extend a hand. They're ready for somebody to give them hope. Do we have to go after those with nothing? The Bible says right there in that pig pen, y'all, he was so hungry, he wanted to eat the slop that he was feeding the hogs. Daddy had us slopping halls back in the day. And look, brothers and sisters, he was a desperate man. And yet the Bible said nobody gave him anything. We ought to go after the broke, busted, and the disgusted. But then we ought to go after the bound, blind, and dependent. These are those with something, y'all. They have addictions that they can't shake. These folks are not desperate. These are the difficult ones because they can't see themselves. You know anybody like that? Everybody else know they strung out. And every time you talk to them, I ain't got no problem. 
These are the folks that cannot see what they are bound by and we ought to be going after those that are shackled by the chains of sin. But then we ought to be also going after the blessed, bountiful, and deceived. You see, these are the folks with everything. The older brother represent these individuals, y'all, and, and sometimes these are the most defiant individuals to go after because they feel like they don't need salvation. Matter of fact, they'll give you your, their resume that they have done everything right. That's what this boy told his dad. I've been here. I did everything you told me to do. I never refused not one thing. And you never did all of this for me. Oh, brothers and sisters, y'all, they got the things, and, and here it is, they have the things to prove it, and yet God is saying, go after everybody. The folks with nothing, the folks that got a whole lot going on, the folks that think they have everything and don't need God. So not only must we get back to business, brothers and sisters, but we got to be open for all business. We got to be open for all business. Let me say that again. We got to be open for all business. You mean everybody? I mean everybody. You, you, you mean we ought to be going after everybody? I mean everybody. I, I, I'm, I'm talking about the black, the white, the rich, the poor. I'm talking about the educated, the ignorant. You got to go after everybody. The sober, uh, uh, those that are still lit. You got to go after everybody. The straight, the gay, the trans, the strange, the atheist. Look, we got to go after everybody. Now, now understand something. Understand something. Everybody can be saved. For God so loved the world. Pastor read it there even in devotion that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Are you trying to tell me preacher that God can still save everybody? Yes! He saved you. He saved me. The last time that I checked, all was born in sin. Every last one of us was shaped in iniquity and in sin that our mothers conceived. Uh, he want us to go after everybody. Now I got that, I got that. I need to make my point. I need to make my point. All can be saved. But oh y'all, we can't keep on doing our sinning once we get saved. Because if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things have become brand new. The boy didn't stay in the pig pen, but he left the pig pen to return back home. And some of us have made some pig pens right in the church. And God is saying, you can't have one foot in the church and one foot in the pig pen. If you're gonna be saved, you got to be all the way saved. I got to let you go. I got to let you go. Oh, brothers and sisters, the Lord is saying, get back to thy passion. Get back to the people. Then, But then lastly, the party to plan. The party to plan. I call this our business fellowships, y'all. Uh, the parties to plan. Uh, verse 25, meanwhile, older oh, son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. The party to plan. Uh, there you have it, there you have it, there you have it. If, if ever somebody asks you why y'all act the way y'all act in church. If ever somebody wonder why the band always got that. If ever somebody wants to ask you why y'all got to shout every Sunday, tell them it's right there in the Bible. They want to know why we holler. They want to know why we sing and dance. Look, the Bible said that they heard music and dancing in the house. 
And can I tell you who had ordered it to go on? Daddy ordered it. Daddy ordered it because Daddy said, we got to celebrate. We, we, we got to celebrate. I, I, I don't want no dead. No, no, I don't want no dead dinner. Daddy said, we got to celebrate this thing. We got to celebrate this thing because, because of the fact that my boy that was dead is now alive. He's come back home and we got to celebrate. And so the party began. Y'all, we got to have a party. Every Sunday when we come together, every time we come together, we party about lives changed. We party about lives changed. And in other words, the boy was not the same. Daddy said, we got too much to shout about in order to be here all cute and sedate. He said, we got to make some noise because this boy of mine has been changed. He was dead, but he's alive. He was lost, but now he's found. We party about the lives being changed. When you walk through the doors of your church, brothers and sisters, you ought to already have a reason to shout. You ought to already have something to praise God about. Because if nobody else can say it, you ought to be able to say like this boy, amazing grace, how sweet it sounds that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I got something to shout about. Do you have something to shout about? I came to Jesus just like I was. I was weary, wounded, sad, but I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad we parted about the lives change but then we parted about the love displayed good god almighty when i look at us in here we are exhibit a of god's amazing grace and his love that looked beyond our thoughts and supplied our every need the reason why they had to celebrate because daddy displayed his love when he restored everything back to that boy can't you see that boy coming up from the pig pen slop mud still under his toenails still between his hands the smell of hogs still on his body he's coming back no shoes on his feet but daddy said bring me bring me a robe to put on my boy bring me bring me some slippers some sandals to put on his feet only slaves walk around bare feet but this is my son that have come back home daddy said give me a ring Give me a ring to put on his finger because I'm giving him back everything that he had. I'm giving him back everything. That's what I love about God. When he saved us, he didn't hold anything back. We came naked. He dressed us up. We came with nothing. He gave us everything. We parted because of the love displayed. But then we parted because of the Lord's glorify. We parted about our Lord glorify. You see, when we celebrate, when the music gets going, when souls are saved, God gets the glory. Matter of fact, y'all, I said salvation parties are two for one, two for one. Preacher, what are you talking about? Every time somebody gets saved, it's not just one party, but two parties happen. One on earth and one in heaven. Every time somebody gets saved, it's two for one. What do you see that preacher? Luke chapter 15, verse 
7 in the same way there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repent and return to God than over 99 others who are righteous in heaven straight away Luke chapter 15 look at verse 10 in the same way there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner one sinner repent I'm here to tell somebody we ought to be glad about our business if angels can praise God over one getting saved if the heavens can crank up the music we ought to be ready to give God the praise for what he's doing in this place I don't know where you are be read but I just believe there's a de-read in heaven that every time somebody come crying, Lord, what must I do to be saved? The signal is given in heaven, de-read, crank up the music, another one has come on in. That's all I stop out of tell you tonight, don't miss the party the party but the God we serve he wants everybody to come to the party Luke chapter 14 verse 23 the Lord said go into the highways and the byways compel dying men come come to the party the table has been spread and I want a full house party if you're broke come to the party if you're bound come to the party if you're hungry come to the party if you make it in sin come to the party the table has been spread come to the party but preacher if we're gonna come to this party what's the charge What's the ticket price? Because every worldly party got a cover charge before you walk through the door. But on a hill called Friday, on a hill called Calvary, one Friday, Jesus paid it all. He died, shed his blood, went down in the grave. But early Sunday morning, power in his hands and he is saying come come to the party come to the party that's why y'all let's get back to business we got to get back to business and we got to run over here we got to run over there we got to search high and low we got to shine over there get back to business don't you come to church yourself pick up somebody on your way to church and if they ask you why are we going tell them we are going to a party yeah! it's a holy ghost party that will give you a high and keep you high it's a holy ghost Business. Get back to business. We got to be open for all business. And then we got to be glad about our business. He's been too good, y'all. He's been too kind, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but I got reason to give God the praise. I got reason to tell God thank you. And they threw a party. Oh, the door is open. Somebody tonight. Somebody tonight. Need to come to the party. Somebody tonight. Need some shadows on your feet. Somebody tonight. Need Jesus in your heart. You ought to come to the party. The table is spread. He will satisfy.
to go. Some folks here don't understand it. Disciples came back to Jesus. They told Jesus, in your name, we work miracles. In your name, we cast out demons. Jesus said, that's good and fine. But can I tell you what you ought to be happy about? That your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. There's a party going on. And I just believe since the party is going on, we ought to celebrate. The door of the church is open. There may be somebody here tonight who wants to be a part of the party. But you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins. I found out that when you got Jesus in your life, that's when the real party starts. Is there one? Would there be one? That was a true story told that in New, New Orleans, Louisiana, that in the municipal pools, nobody that summer drowned. And all of the lifeguards got together at one particular part. They always sing. And what happened was, while there was about a hundred lifeguards, it is said that while they were partying, celebrating nobody got drowned in the pool. 
they were partying so hard that they didn't notice that somebody had slipped in the water, couldn't swim, and drown with all of these lifeguards that was in the building. What am I saying tonight? You ought to check with your neighbor because somebody in here might be going through. They might be down and out. While we are partying on tonight, somebody is drowning in sin and sorrow. If I were you tonight, I'd come while the blood yet warms, runs warm in your veins. You're that one tonight. You're that one tonight. I wonder why they always sing it. Come on, we got time. Let this harvest pass tonight. See, there is room, yet there is none. Would you give God a great big hand clap of praise for our preacher on tonight? Did our hearts not burn while he spoke to us by the way? Hallelujah. I said last night, uh, could you smell what's cooking on tonight? And I didn't know it was going to be some real food out here. Amen. Uh, now I know that uh, it looks real good. I hope it ain't plastic. Amen. I, I rose to uh, just say thank you for another great night and you coming out and helping us party. Uh, the preacher preached on tonight. Yeah. 
It was challenging and inspiring. Amen. Because as I listened to him, uh, it kind of galvanized me to want to even do more. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ord. I know that I'm not the only somebody that was helped on tonight. Amen. But well, certainly we invite you to come back on tomorrow night. Uh, we've got a great preacher, Dr. Kevin Willis, and I believe also that our Memphis Baptist Ministerial Association Mail Course will be rendering music on tonight. So I just want to say thank you so much, and we pray you have a safe trip home. Why don't you say amen? Come on, you got another one. Come on and say amen again. We thank God for a great night tonight. Amen. Did you enjoy yourselves? Were you blessed? Were you helped? Thank you, Dr. Orr, for such an awesome message on tonight. Amen. And that does look like some real food down there. Amen. So I'm, going, I'm not going to... Uh, prolong the time because we got to eat. Amen. It looked like some barbecue ribs, some spaghetti. I'm not going to tell y'all because y'all going to get hungry. So, uh, Again, thank you so much for coming out tonight. Let me thank Dr. Ray again for his hospitality. Thank you so very much. Uh, we're getting ready to go home. We, uh, we want to let you go no later than uh, between 9 and 9.30. Uh, but you know, when the Holy Ghost shows up, there is no time limit. And we just thank, thank God for the movement of the Holy Spirit on tonight. Look, I want to just uh, do one little thing before we go. I have a young lady uh, here tonight that has a, a program that will really bless us. We're going to give her a few moments of, uh, of my time. I'm a, I'm a recovering accountant. In my past life, I was an accountant and I'm recovering. For a long time, I counted other folks' money. But then I learned one day, it's a whole lot more exciting to count your own money. Somebody say amen. Dr. Wood told us about uh, folks that are broke busted and disgusted, but you don't have to be one of them. Amen. So I have a young lady. I'm going to give her the rest of our, our time. She knows to be brief, but uh, she came all the way from Washington, D.C. to be with us. She was here for the King celebration on the other day, and she stayed over just to be a part of this, this uh, ceremony tonight. Her name is Andrea A.C. Chapman. She's sitting right here. Uh, Come on, do we have a spot down there? Uh, can we get a mic? Thank you, Dr. Lynn. Thank you, Brother Butler. Amen. Let's say amen as she comes. She's going to be brief in her own way. Say amen again. We know how to be nice to folk, especially out of town. Amen. After she has spoken, we're going to ask uh, uh, Pastor Orr to come back and give us any closing words he has and benediction. God bless you. I've really been just closing words. Did you really enjoy yourself tonight? Why don't you holler at your neighbor wherever they are and say, neighbor, there's a party going on over here, over here, over here. God bless you. All right. Good evening. I first like to give honor to God for being here today. Um, I'd like to honor our gracious host, Dr. Frank Ray. Um, I thank you so much for your consistency and for all of your contributions to the ministry. I'd also like to honor the president of this great association, Dr. Shields. Um, yes, give it up for him. 
I really appreciate this opportunity. I recognize that what I'm going to share is not something that's typically shared on a revival service. Um, and so I thank you for your leadership and your recognition of the importance of this topic. To Vice President uh, Dr. Glover, who preached the house down uh, like it was Sunday morning at the SCLC banquet on Friday night, I honor you. Um, I'd also like to recognize the chairpersons, Dr. Horner, great to see you again. Um, and also the other chairpersons. And to this incredible music ministry as well, Dr. Matthews and the brother Tim Mason, if he's still in, in the room. Um, I'm a retired musician, and so I appreciate all of, of his contributions to gospel music. Finally, I want to give a special honor to Pastor Walter Womack and his lovely wife for inviting me to Memphis. They're actually the reason that I'm here. And um, thank you for making so many incredible connections. As Dr. Shields mentioned, my name is Andrea Chapman. Everyone calls me AC. And I realize that I have the very intense pressure of standing between you all in dinner and it's sitting in front of you. So it's even more pressure. So I'm going to be brief. Um, as Dr. Shields said, I'm based in Washington, DC, but I've been in Memphis since last week. Um, I was also here in January for your winter board session and I've gotten to know quite a few of you. Um, I had the pleasure of speaking at the SCLC banquet last week and also at St. Mark, um, the oldest black Baptist church in Memphis on Easter Sunday. I think I saw Pastor Mims here. Um, and there's just something special about this city. It's a joy to be with you all. So I'm here to speak with you about something that we don't often talk about in the church, and that's money management. We encourage people to give tithes and offerings. We have great offertory appeals, but we tend to stop there. We don't talk about how to manage the money once we raise it, which keeps us in this constant cycle of fundraising. A lot of times the church tries to separate God and money, but if you actually read the Bible, God has a lot to say about money and how we manage it. We're not supposed to love money, but try to do ministry without money and you won't get very far. And you may ask, well, AC, what qualifies you to talk to us about managing money? Well, my team and I have collectively managed and had governance responsibility for hundreds of billions of dollars at the highest level of investing for some of the top financial institutions in the world. And I have personally managed hundreds of millions of dollars for one of the top regional banks in the country. I left corporate America in 2014 because I realized one day that I was managing all of this wealth for people who didn't look like me. And I could literally count on one hand the number of diverse clients that I had. And so I left there to team up with my current partners and we've committed the rest of our careers to promoting economic equality. Because the spread between the rich and the poor in this country, it just continues to broaden. And so it's also a source of a lot of the turmoil and the conflict that we have in our country and around the world. And so my professional experience as an investor is one of the reasons that I'm here, but I'm also here because I love the church. It's so amazing how God can kind of bring everything in your life back around full circle. So I grew up in a very small town in Eastern North Carolina, and I grew up in the Missionary Baptist Church. So my father is a longtime trustee, and my mother is the minister of music. Um, she's been that since I was a little girl, and she still is the minister of music. And so coming from that small town where there was not a lot of opportunity, I've been very blessed throughout my career to be able to travel all around the world and work with some of the most influential people in the world. And so I'm going to speak with you very briefly today about how the church can use the power of endowments to increase your impact and sustainably fund all the work that God has called you to do. Because at the end of the day, we have to take responsibility for our financial freedom because nobody's going to hand it to us. So I'm the president of a company called GiveRise, and GiveRise is one of those tools. So we have designed a technology platform to basically serve nonprofit organizations to help them easily start their endowments. And we're starting with the church. So what is an endowment? Very simply, it's a legal structure that allows a nonprofit organization to permanently invest money to support the long-term sustainability of that organization. Less than 7% of faith-based organizations have endowments but you have large institutions like Duke University, Harvard, the Catholic Church, and the Mormon Church, they've been using this strategy for decades to build wealth. And they have billions of dollars under management. The Duke University endowment, it started about 100 years ago with $6 million, and today it's worth over $30 billion. If you look at the Mormon Church, they manage over $100 billion. 
And um, my team and I were observing this conversation between a Catholic priest and a Baptist pastor some time ago. And the Baptist pastor said to the Catholic priest, he said, um, I walk by your church every Sunday and you just have a few members in the church. So how do you maintain this beautiful, large building? How do you, how do you keep it up? And he said to the Baptist pastor, whenever someone passes away in my congregation or someone who's connected to the church, they usually leave a financial contribution to the endowment. And so whatever the members give, the few members on Sunday give, it's just an excess. And when someone in your church passes away, they leave you a bill. So that's the difference in the way that we manage our, our finances. And so I believe that the church was never supposed to struggle financially. In fact, I believe it was always supposed to be the center of not just spiritual empowerment, but also financial empowerment as well. You can look at examples in the Bible, in the book of Exodus in the Old Testament, and in the book of Acts in the New Testament, where people were pooling resources. And at one point, the leaders had to tell them, stop bringing resources, stop bringing materials, because we have more than enough. So how did the church go from that period of abundance to being in a state where a lot of churches struggle to meet financial obligations Sunday to Sunday? Well, this is revival, right? So I believe that one of the primary reasons is because the church often has a lot of vision, but not a lot of strategy. We pray about a lot of things that we just need a strategy for, and God has already given us strategies, we just have to embrace them. The Bible says that faith without works is dead, the Bible says that money also answers all things. And so, like I said, we need money to do ministry. So we have to take action and use strategies for our money that allow it to work for us. Additionally, we have to start thinking generationally, right? So Give Rise um, is providing access to endowment style investing for churches of all sizes. So we help them, one, start their endowments, and then two, invest alongside elite institutions like Harvard and Duke. And this is all with no minimum commitment. So you don't have to have millions or billions of dollars to be able to access this. You can literally start with any amount. So it doesn't matter what amount you start with, it just matters that you start. And as I wrap up, if you're a pastor or a ministry leader in the room, please stand. If you're a pastor or a ministry leader in the room, please stand. So I want you all to imagine with me for a moment if you didn't have to worry about finances, you didn't have to worry about constantly fundraising, and you could just focus on executing the mission of your church, your organization. You could just focus on doing outreach, you could just focus on serving your families. Imagine how much more impact you would be able to have. What I've shared with you is a strategy that works. It doesn't work overnight, but over a generation, it transforms our communities. Our ancestors did the fish fries, they sold the chicken plates, because that's what they had to do. And I'm not knocking that, so hear me by the spirit of God, I'm not knocking it because it got us to where we are. But we have greater knowledge, we have greater wisdom, we have greater tools. So we have to elevate our thinking and we have to elevate our execution. There's a difference between organizations and institutions. Organizations can be here today and gone tomorrow. But institutions are strong pillars in our communities and in our society. And if we're honest, most of our churches are organizations at best. Shouldn't our churches be institutions? Thank you, you can sit down. What I've shared with you is a foundational strategy that will create generational wealth and it'll start moving the needle on the wealth divide by empowering the church to be where God intended it to be from the beginning. Um, so I just gave you a very high level overview of what we do, um, but I will be pleased to, to come back. I'm actually gonna be back here probably in a few weeks. Um, I have some materials. I'll be up front after service um, for any leaders, any pastors that want to learn more about what we do. So thank you all so much for your time and attention, and God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Much needed information, amen, um, for us. And I pray that we would take full advantage of that. But again, God bless you, Pastor Ray. God bless you, Pastor Williams. Um, amen. Y'all, it's almost 10 o'clock.
and uh, I still got some birthday calls to make. So, so uh, we're gonna stand, but Brown, thank y'all so very much for being here. Thank y'all for 35 years as well. My mama um, is here uh, tonight, Sister Loreen Orr. Thank you, mama. And um, my, I did have two sons and a grandson here, amen. And uh, God bless y'all. And family, Uncle Benny, I'm, amen. Uncle be of Abram. Amen. Appreciate you. God bless you. God keep you. Let's bow our heads. Father God, Lord, I pray tonight that each one of us, Lord, will get back to the business of hand, of winning souls. We've swapped members long enough, God, and all of our numbers are going down, and yet the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. God, you want to fool the house. So will you help us, God, to get be passionate, to search, to keep shining, to keep serving and witnessing. And Lord, I pray that for the remainder of the year, none of us will go throughout a whole week without sharing the gospel, without inviting somebody, without talking to somebody about you. So give us a burning passion to be on mission for you. Now may you bless and keep us, make your face to smile upon us and be gracious unto us. May you lift up your countenance, grant us your peace. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. And pastors, it is real food. Amen. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I would love for y'all to eat some of it.